So a few days before filming this very video that I'm like making right now, I was out shooting uh, some new suppressors that I just got in and it was a pretty cold day and so as they were getting dirty, the bolt was getting real sludgy and was failing to go all the way into battery. And I really, like I really needed a forward assist. But of course, that did not happen to this guy right here. That happened to one of my direct impingement ARs. Guys, welcome to Country Mash. I hope you guys have been awesome. Today, we are reviewing the Primary Weapon Systems Mark 111 Mod 2. Uh, primary Weapon Systems is known for their long stroke piston system. Um, it operates much like an AK, and so gumming it up and having an issue with uh, you know your bolt sticking and stuff like that, very unlikely with a system like this. So uh, we will talk more about that a little bit later, um, but I just wanna share with you guys that this was sent to the channel from Primary Weapon Systems to review. They are actually local to me, um, and I was planning to go visit their shop and kind of give you guys a little tour, but then COVID happened and um, I'm not really able to do that right now. So we are gonna go over some of the specs and details, kind of go over what makes this unique from your uh, standard AR platform, your you know your typical direct impingement system. Then I'm gonna share with you guys a real world accuracy test with some pretty cheap and crummy ammo because it's 2020 and ammo is kind of hard to come by right now. Then towards the end of the video, I will share my overall experiences uh, using this and you know talk about it's imperfections because uh, like anything, it is not perfect. And while this thing is pretty amazing, um, I do wanna point out you know, some of the things that you should just take note of. So uh, first, let's kick it off by going over some of those specs and details. So to start it off, the Mark 111 designates the 11.85 inch barrel length and carbine length gas system. The Mod 2 designates some special features like the pick lock handguard, a forward assist delete, fully ambidextrous lower receiver controls, and some lightning cuts that help cut weight and also look really good. And I don't say that sarcastically, the Mod 2 is really sexy. So starting up front, we'll talk about the muzzle device that it originally came with, which is their Triad 556. Being a fan of A2 flash hiders, I actually really like this muzzle device for its really simple design. However, I did end up switching it out so I could mount a suppressor. The barrel, as noted earlier, is 11.85 inches in length. It is made out of 41V50 steel. It is button rifled and it has a one in eight twist rate, which is a great twist rate for a pretty wide variety of bullets. And I guess now is a good time to mention that it is chambered in 223 Wild, which if you're not familiar with that, um, you could say it's a looser toleranced 223 chambering and a tighter toleranced 556 chambering. So. It does shoot both 223 and 556 like a 556 chambered rifle would. However, the tighter tolerances do help with improved accuracy. Another feature that makes primary weapon systems unique is their three setting adjustable gas block that's really easy to access and use. Setting one is typically used for all types of ammo in all types of conditions when you're not shooting suppressed. Setting three is typically for shooting suppressed in general. And according to primary weapon systems, setting two is typically reserved for shooting suppressed with weaker ammo or if you were to have a suppressor that mitigates its own back pressure. When I was shooting suppressed, I ended up running mine on setting three with the Dead Air Sandman S attached and I had zero issues. If you buy an upper or a complete firearm, you are supplied with a little key to adjust the gas block. However, it's really just a straight little thing that you stick in there so you can use something like an allen key or anything else that you could fit in there would work just fine to talk a little bit more about the pick lock handguard i think it is a really good design with a good balance between weight and strength one of the things about the mod 2s is they wanted to cut as much weight as possible without compromising anything it does have m-lock slots in it so you can attach some m-lock accessories towards the back 
but up front is their pick lock, which is a Picatinny rail section with direct threaded holes so you can actually directly thread on some M-lock attachments up front, which is a really cool design. And I should also note about the handguard that unlike some other piston driven systems, this barrel is completely free floated under this handguard. The upper and lower receivers are both forged 7075 T6 aluminum. And I should also note that the lower receiver does have a built-in trigger guard that is large enough for winter gloves. And it also has a really nice flared magwell. Their bolt carrier group is obviously their proprietary bolt carrier group, being that it utilizes the long stroke piston system. It is finished in nitride and appears to be machined very well. The trigger that they use is an enhanced mil spec trigger, but mil spec aside, it is a trigger with a really nice crisp and clean break, and I really enjoy it. It does come with a Radian LT charging handle, again sticking with the theme of keeping things lightweight. The furniture is typically from Bravo Company, however this is an AR pistol, so it does not have a buttstock, it has a pistol brace, and it's the SBA3 from SB Tactical. So moving on to my accuracy test. All I had to choose from was 55 grain American Eagle and 62 grain American Eagle. So both not so good uh, when it comes to accuracy, but it's what I had and I said, you know what, I'm gonna roll with it and see what I could get out of this thing. So I took it out at 100 yards, five shot groups, and I did one test. And the 55 grain American Eagle grouped at two and one eighth inches, which is honestly not bad for a shorter barrel shooting 55 grain American Eagle. That stuff is pretty cheap. Now for the 62 grain American Eagle, it grouped at about three inches if you were to count my flyer. But if you don't count that flyer, I had four shots within an inch and a quarter. So even though all I had was the cheap stuff, I was really impressed with the accuracy. So now I just wanna talk about my overall experience and what I think of it. I'm gonna share with you guys some of the things that I really like about it, and then I'm gonna point out some of the things that some people may not like about it. And it's simply because nothing is perfect and I wanna find something. So I may be talking about some nitpicky things, but I think it's my responsibility as a reviewer to do so. So one of the things I really like about the primary weapon systems, Mark 111 Mod 2, is it just looks really good. I mean, it is, it's sexy. Um, I do like to spray paint rifles, but I don't know if I can ever get myself to spray painting this. Um, it is just a really good looking firearm in black. And I know that's like a really weird thing to, to like about it, but I'm just being honest. One of the other things I really like is its strength to weight ratio for a long stroke Okay, I should back that up. It's more of a strength to weight to reliability ratio. Typically long stroke piston systems or any piston driven systems um, and firearms can be pretty front heavy just because um, you have the long uh, solid steel piston up here. You have a bigger gas system in general and there's just a lot of weight up front. And so I'm very surprised for how lightweight uh, primary weapon systems got their mod to. Um, you know, with you know, the, the handguard is lightened down a lot, the receivers are lightened down a lot, and um, it just makes for a really enjoyable, uh, enjoyable to shoot firearm. Um, and you know, it goes to the third thing I really like is it's just smooth as butter. This thing chugs along um, with you know having the three different settings. You're able to pick the exact amount of gas that you're going to need for how you're shooting, um, depending on the ammo selection or if you're running a suppressor or not. I never had any cycling issues and um, it's just so smooth. It's so nice. Um, but, you know, like anything, nothing is perfect. And so I'm going to share with you two things um, that I'm not crazy about. Now, these are things that I don't really care about them. But if I were to be nitpicky and, you know, try to find something about this thing that um, I think could use some improvement, uh, these would be them. So the first one is the upper and lower slop. Now, some people are really weird about that. Some people do not care at all. I am one of those people who I really don't care, but I do have to say, because this is a, uh, a more expensive firearm than your typical AR. These come in at around two grand. And so, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I would just expect it to be a little bit tighter. Um, it, that doesn't take away from anything else 
um, on the Mark 111 Mod 2, but it's just one of those things where I thought you guys should know. The second thing is the forward assist. Now, do I believe that this particular firearm needs it, being that it has the long stroke piston system and it doesn't really get that dirty back here? I don't believe it needs it, but because of where I live, um, and, I, and just, you know, the conditions I shoot in, um, it's, it, it could get really dusty and then it gets really windy and then it could get really cold and things just get all nasty and gum up. And I've had a lot of other of my ARs um, have a hard time either going into battery or just sticking in general. And so I have used my Ford Assist on other ARs um, quite a bit. I don't think this needs it, but that peace of mind would be nice and... I, I do know there, you know, there's other reviewers out there who would agree that the peace of mind would just be nice. So I know those two things aren't that big of a deal and they're kind of nitpicky, but overall, excellent platform for an AR, excellent home defense setup, um, especially for um, anyone who's, you know, a fan of running suppress. If you have suppressors, the fact that you can, you know, adjust your gas setting, this makes an excellent suppressor host when it comes to a short barreled AR. This is definitely a home defense setup for me. Um, as mentioned earlier, this is a Dead Air Sandman S suppressor. The weapon light I have on here is the Surefire M600 dual fuel with the additional pressure pad. The optic I've been running on this for the majority of my testing is the Hollow Sun HE515 GT red dot. Um, this is their kind of higher tiered red dot from Hollow Sun. It's made out of titanium. Has some of you know some additional features to make it a little bit more durable than some of their cheaper ones, and I have really been liking it. I will have a full review out on this guy pretty soon, and um, I mean that's all I've really added to this. Um, the pistol brace, the SBA3, I won't be changing that out. I do like the SBA3. I like the Bravo Company pistol grips, and that's about it. So if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, I will have links down in the description box below. For the stuff that I'm able to link to here on YouTube. Um, and if you guys have any additional questions about this particular setup or just my experience in general uh, using the primary weapon systems Mark 111 Mod 2, feel free to leave your comments down below, guys. Um, I, I always try to get back to you guys. Um, if I can't get back to you or if I'm not notified uh, from YouTube about your comment, because I, I don't get notified about every single comment, it's kind of weird. You guys can always feel free to reach out to me at the Country Mash Facebook page or Instagram page. I'll always get back to you on there. And yeah, that wraps up today's video, guys. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it or got something out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. You guys seriously rock. I love all of you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time.